be clear, I am 100% for getting the most out of all of our alliances and partnership. I'm not so sure about what's really behind these kinds of interventions. No? And ako, the best way to see if people are really being nationalistic and they're really trying to make the most for the national interest, tignan nyo yung track record nila pagdating sa bullying sa atin na nangyayari sa West Philippine Sea. In short, tignan nyo rin yung mga sinasabi ng mga senators na yan, sa China, ano mga ulit ang comments na yan, sa China, yan, kung sobrang nationalistic ka, patriotic, fighting for the country. Yan. Nasaan na? Hindi ko na malabas yung ano. Ayan, 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 Edka Rent. Just to be accurate about this mga kameta, uh, make US pay rent for Edka sites. Alright, saan daw yung principle of reciprocity? Ayan na! Ayan na! Medyo ex... Di ba ito yung ano? Ito yung ano, nagkaroon ng ano, problema dahil wala ng visa. Ayan, okay. Pag-usapan natin yan. So, Senator Ronald Bato de la Rosa nag siya ng kanyang concern dun sa possible mass exodus of the military and uniform personnel amid plans to reform the MUP pension system. So, okay. Meron siyang ganun. Pag-usapan natin mamay itong, itong issue ng M pension system kasi mahaba-habang lecture yan sa fiscal sustainability. no Basics yan. Pag-usapan natin mamay yan. Pero ito yung, mas, ito yung interesting na ako kumuha ng marami attention. Ito yung kanyang... Uh, proposal no na the US should pay rent for enhanced defense cooperation agreement no para bayaran yung pension issue ng okay yun na sige kulang tayo dito wag kayong magalala kuha kami dito bigyan namin sa inyo ganun lang ganun lang naman talaga ang kalakaran nowadays pala no so ito yung sinabi ng ating ano ah, atong mahal na senador sabi niya why not ask the United States to pay for rent for the size used for the enhanced defense coercion agreement to fund the ballooning pension funds for the military and uniform personnel? At katulad sa nabi ko, of course, pag sinabi mo yun sa US, sabi ng US, yes sir, no problem. Bayaran namin kahit anong gusto nyo. Ganun kasimple lang naman, di ba? Let's amend the provisions of the VFA. We can tell the US to pay the rent for the use of our facilities. Wait lang. Etka, uh, VFA, wait. Wait lang. Okay. Um... When Americans come here, they don't ask for a visa, but Filipinos suffer when they... Okay, dito, dito agree ako kay Senator Bato, 100%. Walang reciprocity dyan. Ang hirap kumuha ng visa kung Pinoy ka sa US, considering ito yung former colonizer natin, ito yung ano natin, commonwealth tayo before, tapos grabe yung mga pila pag nakita mo sa US Embassy. Yan, dito agree ako 100% sa kanya. Pero siguro nakalara rin niya yung visa issue niya yan. Where is the principle of reciprocity in international relation? There is no reciprocity. Okay, so dito, in fairness, ha, dito, may point siya. Di ba? Pansin nyo, pag uh, mag-apply ng US visa, haba ng pila, dadaanan kung kung saan-saan, as if naman, as if naman, ano meron sa US, di ba? <laughs> Sorry, mga kameta, yung mga katulad namin na nakapunta sa mga mas maayos na bansa, di ba? Tapos punta ka sa US, yung mga airports, napakaluma, ang gulo ng politika nila, tapos meron pa silang mga Trump, tapos yung mga kalsada, hindi ganun ka. I mean, guys, no offense, no, but if you have if you've seen for instance the highways in in Dubai or Doha, no? Uh, you know, I'm sorry, yung mga highways sa US mukhang kawawa. If you've seen airports from Istanbul for instance, yung airport sa US Yung, yung airport sa New York, mga ganun, parang kawawa. So, I, I don't know, yung ibang Pinoy, napaka-impressed sa US, pero honestly, yung mga iba sa amin na, you know, had the privilege of being all around the world and seeing yung mga mas maayos na bansa. Ang layo, ang layo. Yung autobans sa Germany, nako po, walang laban dyan ng mga US, ano, US, US dyan. So, I don't know, pag sinasabi ng iba na number one, ganito, ganito, parang, ah, number one saan? Diba? Number one sa size and all, sige, given na yan, but... Abol lang China dyan. But in terms of quality of infrastructure, mga, I think there's only one area where I think U.S. is really ahead of everyone is educational institutions. I'll give it to them. I think Yale and Harvard and Ivy League schools and Berkeley are still among the best universities on earth. Don saludo ako sa U.S. Pero pagdating sa ibang issue, infrastructure, society, punta ka sa San Francisco, ang dami mga uh, hobos doon. Diba? Grabe. Parang for a country as rich as the United States, for San Francisco, such a wealth, tapos ganyan. Punta ka sa, sa New York, lalabas ka lang doon sa medyo posh areas na Manhattan kung saan-saan ka mapatpat. May isang beses nagkamali tayo. Pagtingin ko, parang ako lang yung ano, di ba? <laughs> ako lang naka-French coat or something. And it's like, wait, saan, saan ba tayo, pre? Di ba? Oh, sa lagay ko na yan, ha? I mean, di, 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 di tayo malaya sa six foot tall. But, but you know, 
I didn't feel safe, you know? And these are even the more wealthy, more developed cities in the US. I mean, no offense, mga kameta, but anyway, so, ipapadaan ka kung ano, ano para lang kumuha ng visa sa US, parang. Anyway, at least naman, minsan pag binibigyan ng visa sa US for the next 10 years yan, so madali na yan. But, but I'm just saying, I'm just saying, in fairness kayo ba to, may point siya dito. Alright? May point siya dito. So, pero yung, uh, eh, pero yung idea na i-juice out mong US para bayaran mo yung problema sa pension system, sa military, etc. Like, I'm not sure, mm, I'm not sure this works. And let me explain to you why. Alright, balikan natin to ah. So, first of all, let's look at the very text. Let's look at the very text of the Etka mga kameta. Okay. Basa-basa muna bago mag-comment para tipo sinisabi, di ba? Lahat naman tayo nagkakamali. Ako rin nagkakamali. Misa. So, ito ah. Klarong-klarong mga kameta. So, Article 3, Paragraph 3. Tignan nyo, basahin nyo yan ah. Basahin nyo yan. Klarong-klaro sa Etka. Na nakalagay. Given the mutuality of benefits... Meaning, uh, ang Amerika ay, at least, base sa uh, ano, kasunduan na yan, tutulungan din ng Amerika ang Pilipinas pagdating sa kanyang uh, training, pagdating sa kanyang AFP modernization, pagdating sa kanyang development ng kanyang defensive capability, deterrence capability. Tsaka the idea is that indirectly, kung mas marami mga kano dyan, mas marami silang mga facilities, that might also make the bullies think twice about making many shenanigans dun sa mga karagatan natin. Right? So, Claro, ha? given the mutuality of the benefits, right? Kalagay, the parties agree that the Philippines shall make agreed locations available to the United States forces, ito, quotation pa, without rental or similar costs. And United States forces shall cover, uh, and dun yan, uh, cost. But the United States Forces shall cover their necessary operational expenses with respect to their activities. In the, so kung may mga operational expenses sila, babayan ng US yan. Pero walang rental dun sa access. Now, this is very important mga kameta because the last time the Americans were paying rent to us, and this is where I'm going to say, the rent issue is dangerous, actually not good for us because the last time they nagbayad sila ng rent sa atin, they had permanent access sa ating, ba, sa ating ano, mga base dyan, right? And bawal yan. At hindi natin gusto yan. Ayaw, natin, ayaw na natin ng mga permanent US bases. Katulad ng Cold War period. So the moment na pabunta ka sa rent payment situation, ibang usapan na yan mga kameta. Hindi na etka yan. Medyo bumabalik na tayo dun sa permanent bases na bawal base sa ating saligang constitution. At as I said, eto mga kameta, klarong-klaro yung text ng etka, Article 3, Paragraph 3, na dapat walang mga rent issue na yan dahil this is supposed to be a rotational access. It's not a permanent access, rotational access. It's a kind of a light footprint access, mga kameta. Alright? This is very important. Now, let me give you a little bit of background on the whole ETCA situation. There's a very good article by a good friend of ours, Professor Thayer at New South Wales University, where he explains the circumstances of that. Now, alam natin circumstances of that, mga kameta, because... Because, as a journalist, aside from an academic, as a journalist, I was covering the evolution of the negotiations. In fact, one of my former professors from UP was, I think, Assistant Secretary for DND back then, who was involved in this negotiation. So, very spirited, yung debate nung time ng 2012, 2013 to 2014. So, basa. Ulit ha, basa tayo. So, etong etka na po, etong etka, Ito po ay isang produkta ng mahaba-habang negosasyon, right? More than a half a dozen rounds based on some of the reports that we saw, mga kameta. You're free to check, for instance, itong napagandang article from Professor Thayer about the importance of ETCA. So, there were multiple rounds, more than a half a dozen rounds of negotiations. At huwag natin kalimutan, mga kameta. So, hindi madali gumawa ng mga ganitong ano, no, kasunduan, no? Ah... Uh, Mahaba habang usapan yan. Usually, it takes even years. In fact, sometimes revising just the guidelines of a bilateral defense treaty takes years or more. Now, there were like, by some indication, seven, eight rounds of negotiations. And eventually, ito lumabas itong ETCO na yan. And this is where, mga kameta, I do agree, though, with Senator Bato de Rosa na we need more reciprocity and mutuality because 
to be honest, to be honest, siguro next time interview natin ulit yung mga galing sa Aquino administration doon kasi alam niyo naman mga kameta nung isang araw na interview namin doon sa Real Talk podcast namin si former Secretary for Political Affairs si Ronald Yamas. Don't worry guys, lalabas yung full version ano, production level uh, version soon God willing ilalabas namin. But but I want to ask also more people who were part of the Aquino administration and who were part of negotiation of this. My sense is mga kameta, we did not get the best version of the EDCA that we could have got. First of all, I'm uncomfortable giving access to foreign troops to our territory. And we don't have a very good history about that. At the same time, there's a reality na kulang tayo sa sariling defensive capabilities at malaking bully dyan. Okay. Having said that, dun sa initial rounds ng EDCA, actually, ang pinupush ng Pilipinas, particularly sila, the late, uh, and God bless his soul, um, Foreign Secretary Albert de Rosario, actually, ang pinupush nila mga kameta was a situation whereby, whereby in exchange for yung partial access dun sa mga base um, sa ilalim ng EDCA, papalist tayo ng kanilang mga, ano, mga armas. I'm talking about potentially submarines, frigates, some of the advanced weapon systems. Now, why was that the position of the Philippines? That was the position of the Philippines because we were in a desperate situation. Remember mga kameta, Remember mga kameta, we are talking about just months after the Panatag show crisis. Nawala na po. Nawala, nawala na po yung Scarborough Shoals atin. Kinuha ng China noon. No? So effectively, may de facto control na sila after yung palpak na negotiations na nangyari over the mutual disengagement from that area. Now, uh, I have the version of Philippine Navy on what happened in Scarborough Shoals. For instance, you can check my interview with uh, Admiral Ong. Uh, dun sa show natin sa One News TV5. Um, I also uh, you know, interviewed folks from the Philippine Coast Guard. You'll have a, uh, you'll see a copy of that soon. So I, I talked to a lot of people, mga kameta, people from different, sa, uh, galing sa iba't ibang, no? Uh, larangan ng ating gobyerno at ating foreign policy ng panahon na yan. Nevertheless, I think what really is... I also talked to Trillanes, by the way, back in the day na interview natin siya. I think this is 2019 na interview ko siya. You can find it on YouTube. Just put, hey, Darian Trillanes, lalabas yan. Makita niyo yung interview na yan. O baka may mga may mga naman. Obviously, maraming trolling na nangyari sa atin nun. But going back to this mga kameta. So, you're talking about Scarborough Shoal. Few months removed from that. Desperate ang situation. Desperate ang Pilipinas. Sinisabi natin sa mga Amerikano na tulungan nyo kami, please tulungan nyo kami, kailangan namin ng tulong, kailangan namin ng armas kasi hindi kami nirespeto ng China dahil kulang yung aming kakayahan. At para medyo kulang yung suporta nyo sa amin nung time ng Scarborough Shoal. So ito yung context, no? So kaya nga may back and forth and back and forth. E ang problema nung time na yan, ang US under Obama, uh... I mean, you may love Obama's domestic politics or personality, but as far as support for the Philippines is concerned, talagang kapos. At si Obama, very concerned about engaging China. Umiba lang yan nung panahon ni Trump at saka Biden kasi sila aggressive na sila sa China. Pero nung time ni Obama, gusto pa rin ng US to engage China. Kaya para medyo pinabayaan tayo nung time na yan, di ba? Pinabayaan tayo nung time na yan. So, hindi sila pumayag because the argument of uh, Obama was, nako, pag pinalease natin sa mga Pilipino, tapos gamitin nila yan, tapos makipag-yera sila sa China para kunin ulit yung scar partial, damay-damay na yan. Ayaw namin yan. No. So, a lot of our initial requests, no, mga kameta, ay tinurn down ng US. So, my understanding here is the final version of the ETCA is not 100% what was intended on the part of the Philippines. Now, whether it's 60%, 70%, 40%, we can argue that. We can argue about that. We can debate about that. But I do agree that the ECA as it stands is not optimal. But it's not also optimal because it was negotiated under circumstances of desperation. And just to blame the Aquino administration for that would be unfair because the Aquino administration inherited a very weak military pagdating sa uh, uh, you know, yung kakayan natin na uh, depensa ng sarili natin laban sa mga, uh, yung mga international threats, no? So, yun po yung context na sinasabi natin, mga kameta. So, in short, in short, I agree that ETCA, when it was negotiated a decade ago, was not optimally negotiated, alright? But, tapos na eh. na no 2014, and then, by the way, there was, there was still two years left 
two years left before nagklaro ito ng Philippine Supreme Court. So, mahaba-habang usapan yan. So, essentially, you're looking at four years before EDCA became some sort of an operational agreement. Now, huwag natin kalimutan mga kameta, ang EDCA po ay executive agreement. It's not ratified by the U.S. and uh, Senate and not ratified by the Philippine Senate. So, this is a direct one-to-one -one negotiations between the executive branch of the Philippines and the U.S. government. So, prerogative pa rin ng presidente anong gagawin niya dito. So, for instance, pano ni Digong, nalaman natin na si Digong, sabi niya, o oh, sige, let's keep the ka pero wag natin i-fully implement yan para hindi magalit yung kanyang mga kaibigan sa China. No? And, uh, and only towards the end of the Duterte administration, nakita natin na may mga efforts na i-fully implement itong ka Kasi ang, ang, ang idea dyan sa ka is, gagastos ang Amerika para pagandahin yung ibang sites. Sites lang, literally sites. Walang base, kampo, etc. And then, sana yung presence nila, yung idea was, medyo to deter China. At saka, kasabay ng ka tutulungan din nila yung Pilipinas para palakasin yung kanyang kakayahan pagdating sa pagdepensa sa ating karagatan sa West Philippines, etc. So, yun yung konteksto. Now, nevertheless, of course, hindi lang naman China yung issue sa EDCA, andun yung counterterrorism, humanitarian assistance, disaster relief operations, but two bases sa, rin, sa ilalim ng EDCA 1.0 ay may direct na kinalaman sa West Philippines, si Basa Air Base at uh, uh, Bautista Air Base. No? Palawan yung pangalawa, pa yung isa naman sa Pampanga. Now, just to give you an idea, this EDCA actually nakalutang siya for a while. etong si Bato, di ba, ano, beshi ni tatay yun, di ba, or whatever. Um, the thing is, but wo hindi sila nagsalita nung time na andun sila. Sila yung, di ba? So, if you look at it, EDCA projects, ang dami mga delays pa noon ni Digong. So, for instance, ayon ni Digong na, ayon ni Digong na ma-delay, ay, ayon ni Digong na mag-preposition ng weapon system sa mga Amerikano dyan kasi sabi niya, Ito ay medyo delikado, mga uh, compromising sovereignty natin. Pero alam natin talaga yung totoong reason. Kasi alam niya na mainis yung China. So ayaw na naman magalit yung mga kanyang ano. Diba? So just to give you an idea. So there were a lot of analysis about how the delay in the implementation of EDCA, for instance, was very problematic. So actually, dahil dun sa opposition ni Tatay sa full implementation of EDCA, tuwan-tuwa ang China dun. Dahil... Walang masyadong presence ang US dun sa mga base na malapit sa West Philippine Sea. At pangalawa, hindi rin na fully implement yung mga joint plans na meron ng Pilipinas at US para palakasin yung kapasidad ng uh, yung Armed Forces of the Philippines to be able to, to, to withstand uh, modern warfare intimidation from China or gray zone uh, intimidation from China. So, only in 2022 nakikita natin na nag, nag, medyo nag, ano na, nag-kick off na yung EDCA projects. Meaning actual development of those sites to allow for preposition of weapon systems, for more American troops to come in. So sobrang delay yan. So my point is, eto, itong mga, itong mga bato na to, ba't di sila nagsalita noon pa lang panon hindi gong? Kung ano talaga na, ba't noon pa lang hindi nila na-negotiate ang total new agreement? Or just get rid of EDCA that's it, executive agreement, make a new agreement altogether, or just no agreement whatsoever. Diba? So, yun yung sinisabi ko dito, na I don't know what's what's really the what's really the context ng itong mga interventions na meron tayo, because my fear sometimes is, I'm not saying this is exactly okay, but my fear sometimes is people are just punching the Philippine-US alliance to score populist points or to make some other people happy, right? So, yun ang point ko eh. Parati ko sinasabi. Now, I, kay, in fairness kay Escudero naman, uh, medyo strong naman yung stance sa China uh, throughout the years, or relatively strong. So, siguro, it, for him talaga, it's a question of making the most out of the relationships and lies we have. But, um, yun nga yung mga kameta eh. You cannot just go in and say, ay, ibang gusto namin pa. Eh, ang hirap pag negotiate ng agreement. At, tignan mo, kung, ikaw, eh, kung yung Amerika naman, Eh, ano, bubulin mo yung Amerika na papalitan? Like, good luck with that, ba? Uh, and don't forget, ang Amerika po yung negotiate ng agreements with multiple countries all around the world. They have basing access, all sorts of similar access, uh, you know, agreements, what, 100 plus countries around the world, no? Ito yung invisible empire ng United States. So, kung papayag sila na ganyan-ganyan lang sila ng Pinas, 
Hindi gaganyan din sila ng iba't ibang bansa, di ba? So, so hindi to That's what I'm saying. Let's be adults here, right? We disagree with... We can say na hindi optimally negotiated. We work with what we got. Or we throw it all out and then go for a new agreement but accept all the risks. But yun dapat ang ginawa ni Digong noon. Ba't di niya ginawa? Yung VFA yung inanon niya. Pero yung ETCA, that was a purely executive agreement. He could have got rid of that. So bakit ngayon lang nangingay itong mga pro-tatay people? So yun lang point ko ngayon. Alright? So, so mga kameta, I'll keep it there because there's a lot that we can discuss about ETCA as more and more details comes in because come in because hanggang ngayon hindi natin alam ilan ang mga Amerikano na papasok dun sa mga basis na yun on rotational basis hindi natin alam exactly ano yung mga weapon systems na i-proposition nila so marami pang bagay na pag-usapan natin but remember this is not about permanent basis mga kameta this is not about permanent basis so idea of you know yung rent rentier style ano geopolitics that's so cold war and that that implies na may permanent access sila or may parang base leasing agreement sila which is not the case now this is a very flexible light touch kind of a f- agreement so it's very different from that so actually it might not help our cause if we try to inject the rent issue because kung may pumasang rent issue then biglang parang so ano permanent basis ng pinag-usapan natin leasing talaga all the way because the EDCA is supposed to just give rotational access much more light touch no na by the way, hindi pa rin na-finalize because si BBM, katulad ng sinabi natin, over and over again, BBM is not 100% sure kung gusto niya mag-fully align sa US because he doesn't want 